team is national championship winning head coach of Mississippi State baseball, Chris Lamonis and coach. Does that still feel a certain way when somebody introduces you that way, national championship winning head coach? Well, it's a little different, but, you know, shoot, I've always been proud just to hear Mississippi State baseball coach. So it's a, uh, a pretty cool thing right now uh, where we're at and, and, and what we're doing. It hasn't really sunk in yet, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. So, so you've held the trophy, you've brought it back to Starkville, you, you've worn the merchandise, and it still hasn't sunk in for you that, that you're the national champions? You know what's funny is, is in our world, we've also, we're working nonstop right now. So all my coaches, you don't get to enjoy it as much in baseball because you're wearing the right in the middle of recruiting season. The draft is this weekend. You're meeting with kids and family. So um, we'll have a time to enjoy it. We, we got to hang out on the 4th of July, and we kind of, Got to sit back and tell some stories in the last two weeks, and um, but it, I think it'll sink in more as time goes on. Anytime you win a championship of any kind, there's always stories. There's always players who step up. There, there's always you know the the underrated guy who came out of nowhere to do something. And you had a little bit of of all of that. Let's start with Will Bednar, who you know everybody knew he was good. Everybody knew he was talented, but he was as good in the College World Series as maybe any pitcher who's ever pitched in that event before. You right. knew he was going to be good. Did you know he was going to be that good? No, nah, I didn't. Uh, you know, we moved into the front of that rotation early in the regionals. And um, mm-hmm. just because we wanted to have, you know, one, he matched up really good with our first regional opponent, who was a really good offensive team. And then, two, you get a chance to pitch him a little bit more. And when you look back on it, it made a big difference, you know, being able to get that last start out of him and getting him to pitch. But he pitched at a really high level. He's such a competitive kid, such a competitor. Um that's what came out on that national stage as he just competed. I think when I when I talk to coaches, they're always excited when a guy who's struggled makes some big plays. In in game two against Vanderbilt, Lane Forsythe with what three hits in that game? How excited were you as a coach to see him finally get get up there and, and, and put the ball into play and, and make big hits? Well, you know, you're happy for the kid. You know, like you know, seeing these kids struggle on big stages too is not fun. So he was able to get out there and relax and have fun. And once he got a couple hits, he was actually good the next night, too. It's just, yeah. you know, when you're in a funk and in a slump, man, it just that bat feels like it weighs 100 pounds. And uh, it, was, it was fun to get to see Lane play play loose on that stage and play, play to his ability because he was really good in the College World Series, especially defensively. Yeah, I was just about to ask about that. You know, I watched every game your team played, and obviously all of them there in Starville, I was there. And your team, quite honestly, at times was just not good defensively this year. But at the on the biggest stage, they turned into Brooks Robinson and Ozzie Smith over there on that side of the infield. It, I know you can't explain it, but what what did you talk to your team about defensively, and how were they able to perform at that level? Well, actually, we had like a we had a tough piece defensively, mainly at third base is where we struggled. Um, Cam went through some growing pains. Um, but for the, the reality is we were really good defensively in the outfield. We were really good defensively behind the plate. Um, Scotty DeBrule, I don't know if he made an error after the halfway point of the season, you know. So, you know, mainly just getting Cam going was the biggest piece and, and getting him to play relaxed. And, you know, I thought him and Coach Gotro did a great job of just getting some fundamental skills going. And Cam's very talented. He just he got into a funk like Lane did offensively and, and, and fell behind, but I, I give him a lot of credit for fighting through it. He was one of our better guys. I mean, we had a shortstop playing third base in the College World Series. I mean, he made numerous great plays, but yeah. um, it's just a lot of work, just just getting in and doing the work. And, and these – I mean, people forget that, man, Cameron James hadn't played an SEC game until this year. I mean, mm-hmm. Logan Tanner, Will Bednar. I mean, so many of these kids, they were freshmen, really, in terms of eligibility. And so there were some growing pains with that, but I, I – we thought we were going to be good defensively to start with. It really doesn't. To say you're going to make zero errors in the College World Series, that's pretty amazing, even with a great team. But um, I was happy for him. You mentioned the draft. It's just I think it's next week at the 11th is, is when it starts up. You know, Obviously, you've had a chance to talk to most of your players. I think we all expect that Tanner Allen, Rowdy Jordan, Will Bednar will be making their way to professional baseball. Are there, is there anybody else that you're expecting to leave that Mississippi State fans would think might stay, or or the other way around, somebody coming back that you would consider a surprise that they're going to return? No, I think um, I think Christian McLeod's a guy that had a you know besides his last two starts, he had a pretty good season. And 
probably is, has an opportunity to go pretty good in the draft this year. Um, same, even Eric Tarantola, we're hearing great things about. I think Eric's got a chance to go out there in the draft. And we got some iffy guys. You know, Cameron James is sophomore eligible. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. It's, it's The landscape's very different right now. So, you know, pro baseball, they cut all these teams. They moved the draft back until the middle of July. They, they've, um, they've cut it in half almost, you know. So, you know, it's a little different. I'm trying to get a feel for it. I don't have a great feel for the draft right now like I normally do. So it can be a little tricky. Um, you know, incoming high school kids, that's, that's one of our biggest ones. We're sitting there, and I've done some Zoom calls and just trying to touch base with people to make sure uh, everybody has all the information. But it, it's going to be a tricky year. I, I, I just don't know how to read it yet. You, you and I have talked about that before, about how you know baseball is really the only sport where you sign a guy and then it's still not done a lot of times. you got to wait and see what, what the draft brings. Do you feel pretty good about your high school class coming in and you're going to get most of the guys that you, you, you think you're going to get? I think we'll get most. I mean, there's a guy or two that, that we're probably going to have to really fight on and, and see. If, you know, if those kids go in the first round or second round, I, I don't think we'll get them. Um, but, I, you know, it's just, like I said, it's hard to tell right now. It's just that we haven't even been out there to see these kids play. So, for me, it's um, it's pretty tough. But I feel like we'll do pretty good in the draft. We won't get everybody, but we'll have a we'll have a really good class. I have to imagine the fan support that was shown to your team in Omaha and then back here in Starkville last Friday is, is you know, just another great recruiting tool for you. Do MSU fans surprise you with, with their support sometimes? I mean, you know the crowds are going to be big, but when you're taking over TD Ameritrade in that way or when you're having to turn people away from the championship to go over to the hump because you just can't fit anybody else in the baseball stadium, were, were you even taken surprised by that? Well, we were really surprised by that parade. It, it, it really shocked me that we had that many people. We, we thought it would be a couple thousand people. You know, everybody had been to Omaha. Everybody <laughs> well. celebrated. And it just – it went it went crazy. So um, yeah, it, it's shocking. You know, it's just not only do we have a big fan base, they're a little fanatical too. So they're everywhere. They're in the streets. They're, I mean, it's just it's been a lot of fun over the last couple of weeks. Whatever you know, and Hale State Video does such a great job of documenting everything. But they did a something the past couple of uh, wins the, in the College World Series and in Super Regionals of making sure they had a camera on you and your coaches, and to see that you guys get to celebrate as well. What's what's the message between coaches? When, when those wins happen? You know, um, just yes. You know, there's such a relief. Um, it validates a lot of things that we, we talk about and we do. And I was talking with somebody today, hearing our kids in those moments and hearing seeing our kids do things, um, you hear them talk about our culture on those stages. It's just a feeling of validation. Man, we put a lot of time and effort. We're away from our families a lot. And um, it's fun for us, and it's really fun to watch these kids um, you know, do great things on this stage, you know. So um, it's just, you know, for us, and then we're a close group. we got a, we got a close tro- coaching staff, and um, we support each other a lot. Coach, about 60 seconds left here. Are, are you ready for the, a new level of high expectations at Mississippi State? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's coming, right? It's never going to be easy. So I just, you know what I was disappointed in today? I thought Richard was going to be on the show. We don't have Richard today. <laughs> we we ran him off this week, Coach. He's, he, he's on one yeah, he of his six vacation vacations of the year. So <laughs> you tell him I would love to see him. In, I want him to come take a picture with us. So as he always give me a hard time. I know he's a little miss guy. So you give him, a, Coach. Don't worry. Give him a hard time when y'all see him next. Oh, I put him in his place last week. Don't worry about all that. I had I had all of that taken care of for you. So it's all in good fun. So it's all yeah. in good fun. So we. uh but I thought I'd get him on the line today. I was disappointed when I heard he wasn't there. So no, no I'll, I'll let him know you were thinking about him. Yeah, okay. I'll let him know so. that you were thinking about him. So, Coach Chris Limonis, Mississippi State baseball national champion. I didn't know that I'd ever get to say that. Coach, congratulations to you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I uh, thank y'all for putting this on all year long too. We appreciate it. So, Hell State.